Okay. Ready? I'm ready. Yeah. Okay. So hello and welcome everyone to this presentation of the translators and interpreters freelance movement. Uh, what is this? This is all related to translators and interpreters, language professionals who created a movement in getting an exemption from AB5 and its subsequent fix-it bill, AB2257. Why is this important? It's important because we have never seen anything like this happen to our profession before. We needed to take immediate action to remedy this situation. This is the grassroots movement that has taken place in California. We are now the leaders in, in the United States in defending our profession against internal forces. The people you're about to meet today were very vocal about their need for an exemption. It is not an exhaustive list by all means. There were many people who worked in the background that you won't see here today. Uh, a lot of them were invited and because of problems and conflicts with their agendas and calendars and work and stuff, they could not be here. Uh, they may join us later on. These are uh, simple folks who were willing to come forward to share their experiences with you. They're just working interpreters and translators. Uh, we have a couple of out of state uh, translators who will most likely join us. You're gonna hear how they attempted uh, to answer the questions given to them. Um, they were given questions before this meeting. Um, interpreters and translators eventually got an exemption from AB5. Uh, this became law a whole year after it was heard about, okay? It took an entire year. This is a very unusual feat. Most of the exemptions happen before it actually went into effect. But that means that people participated. They were calling their lawmakers and helping those working in the background. Uh, there was a few groups. Um, it took about a few groups, a few lobbyists, and a lot of effort to accomplish this. An exemption means that interpreters can now work, interpreters and translators can work as contractors with language service companies if they meet certain criteria. Now, we can work freely with language service companies who are fair to us and we can negotiate our rates. Please refer to the actual uh, Senate bill 2257 as we do not discuss these issues here. This is about their uh, work in accomplishing this. We're highlighting a few individuals, individuals that I've known personally or through social media. I wanted to acknowledge their efforts because without their voices, little would have been known. Before we begin, I'm going to set a few round, uh, ground rules. Everyone, please be on mute until you're called upon to speak. I will call out the names of, at random at the beginning so each interpreter and or translator can introduce themselves, say uh, what they do for a living, what area they work in, et cetera. Later, I'm going to call out names in alphabetical order and each participant or panelist will speak, they have five minutes. Not everyone is going to speak for five minutes, but that's their time limits they don't always have to use their time. Now, the questions that were asked of them is this, um, in what efforts did you participate and why? What message would you like to convey to all translators and interpreters, the professionals who are out there practicing their profession? And how do you see the future of the profession and what needs to be done in order to accomplish this? They will attempt to answer these three questions within their allotted time. Please uh, bear with them. Uh, I'm sure they, they're very excited. They have actually worked really hard in preparing this presentation for you. So 
Uh, we're going to have, after we're done, we're going to have a Q&A session. So anybody who is a participant can actually uh, post their questions. We'll be listening in to those. We're going to be checking. We're, we're trying to go into Facebook Live. We had a little uh, problem getting in. We'll be live as soon as we can. But if not, this recording will be available and will be published on Facebook and YouTube after we complete this. For now, let's begin and let's give everyone a round of applause for um, the person that is going to be speaking. Let's say, um, Robert, are you going to be a panelist today? Robert said day. No? Okay. I wasn't, I wasn't planning to. I do have a question or two. I'm an observer. But do you, okay. <laughs> Fine. Uh, Katerina Borghi is the first one, so I can see her here, and I will ask her to just introduce herself. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Thank you so much uh, for having me here. It's a real honor to be with you guys. My name is Katerina. Uh, my working languages are English and Spanish. I'm a state and federal court certified interpreter. Um, I primarily specialize in legal and the med legal areas. Um, I hold a master's degree in translation and interpretation from the Monterey Institute, and I'm also adjunct faculty there. I'm really excited to be here tonight to talk to you about my experiences and hopefully inspire you and answer some of your questions. Thanks. Awesome. We have uh, Mari. Thank you so much, Katerina. Um, Maribel Cariño, you're up. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me. I'm proud of all of us. I am predominantly an interpreter, but I am also a translator. I live in San Diego. I'm federally certified and state certified, and I look forward to hearing all of your stories. And you're also a musician. A little bit, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mary Hernandez, introduce yourself. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Esther, for this opportunity. And uh, my name is Mary Hernandez, and my working languages are English, Spanish. I'm an interpreter, community interpreting. I hold a core CHI provisional certification, and I look forward to the rest of the event. So thank you. Cool. Uh, Ryan Lee, introduce yourself. Good uh, evening, everyone. My name is Ryan Lei, and um, I'm a Vietnamese interpreter and translator. I live in Los Angeles, California, and um, um, I am a CMI Vietnamese course CHI um, Tier 1 Arizona Credential Core Interpreter and working to, to get a course certified in California. I'm very honored to, to be here to um, share what I've done and what's the future hold for the profession. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Nice. Uh, and I'm kind of calling people in the order I see them on my screen. So later I will call people by alphabetical order. Okay. Tony, introduce yourself, please. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Pleasure to be here. Esther, thank you so much for setting this up. My name is Tony Valle. I am a state and CCHI certified interpreter. I work primarily for the courts and during depositions as a freelancer. And uh, one of my passions is for working in teams uh, to achieve certification goals. And so during these past few years, there are a total of 10 of us who have achieved our certification goals by working together with me on a team. So that's something I'm very proud about and very passionate about as well. And I've worked with a number of our leading lights in terms of teachers, including Gio Lester, Virginia Valencia, Karen Borgenheimer, Yvette Citizen, Athena Matoski, Edgar Hidalgo Garcia, among others. So thrilled to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Patty Lehman, I'm so excited to see you here. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, Esther. Hi, everyone. Um, actually, and just to be clear, I, I didn't prepare a presentation or anything either. But um, yeah, my name is uh, Patty Lyman, and um, I'm a state certified Spanish interpreter. And um, happy to be here with all of you, and uh, just also an observer. What? OK. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good to see Sorry. you. <laughs> Angelica, you were invited though. <laughs> Hi everybody, uh, my name is Angelica ortiz Chahowski. I am, uh, well, first of all, thank you Esther for inviting me. I am, a, I am an interpreter and translator, um, more recently an interpreter because it's uh, my career in interpreting is recent. So I'm very honored to be here and looking forward to 
mostly learning and hearing from your experiences. So thank you for including me. Awesome. Uh, next, we have Paco. He just joined us. <laughs> we can't hear you, Paco. Still cannot hear you. Well, we can come back to you and introduce yourself. Um, hey, Gio just joined us. Uh, Gio is from Florida. Do you want to introduce yourself, Gio? Now the new president of another association. She's an amazing interpreter, translator, conference interpreter, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> <laughs> Grandmother. Ah. <laughs> Hello. I'm Gia Lester. I live in Florida, Pinecrest. Hi, Tam. And um, I'm a translator and interpreter in Brazilian. I'm currently the president of Abrates, the Brazilian Association of Translators and Interpreters. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Now we have Giovanna Farias. She's a local OC girl. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you all. And thank you for inviting me and putting this together, Esther and Anabela. And just a pleasure to be with you all tonight because I know everyone put in great efforts uh, to get us to where we are now and then to determine where we're going from here on out. So thank you. Thank you. Oh, court certified uh, <laughs> Spanish what? English and um, LA Orange County area. Very good, thank you. And I think anybody else is missing. I, I'll, I'll have to introduce myself because there's nobody else. But Paco, are you ready to go? Uh, is your volume up in your computer? He just wrote on the chat having issues with the microphone. Okay. So he looks like he's unmuted, uh, but apparently there's yeah, something. Okay. Well, let me introduce myself. My name is Esther Admida. I'm a certified uh, Spanish interpreter uh, certified by the state of California and the federal courts. And I've been an interpreter for close to 30 years, actively uh, working in the private sector for a very, very long time. <laughs> Since 2004, when I had to give up my position in state courts because a union came in and uh, asked, there was no room for me as a contractor permanently assigned to a courtroom. So I had to give up my position and been in the private sector. This is close and dear to my heart because I had to reinvent myself in the private sector. And uh, lo and behold, there's a new law that comes by and takes over and I that's unacceptable. I built my business like most of us have and we're entitled to, to work as business people. But right now, this is all you're going to hear from me. Right now, we're going to be talking about those people who were actually actively working. These were the grass, grassroots, grassroots efforts that was being uh, done. Uh, we're going to begin with uh, Caterina Borghi. She's going to, she has the floor now. And she's going to speak about what she did. I'm looking forward to hearing from her. All right, Katarina, it's all yours. Thank you so much, Esther, for that kind introduction. Thank you, Esther and Anabella, once again, for um, connecting us, for organizing this event. This should be very celebratory because we have secured an exemption from AB5. Um, before I give you sort of a long laundry list of the efforts um, that I have made over what I realize is more than a year now, um, that I've been involved, I want to really emphasize what, why I did what I did. And the why is you guys, it's my colleagues. Um, I really want to emphasize that it wasn't just our individual efforts, but rather there's a lot of overlap in these efforts. A lot of the things that I did, I did with my colleagues, or I did with the motivation, the encouragement of my colleagues. So that is where our strength really lies. And that's where I think that we should be looking in the future. 
um, because the people that I admired, respected, and trust were being active, I then became energized to be active. So I would say the first time that I became involved was in Coptic. And I believe that I heard about it through Esther. Um, I heard about this law AB5 and I thought, oh, we have to do something. We have to, you know, there's strength in numbers. So I did attend Coptic meeting in Los Angeles and then later in Orange County. I also met with my legislator, um, my S Senator Morlock in December of last year. So quite a long time ago. And a lot of these meetings, as I said before, became efforts in a group. You know, it, it came to the point with social media that people would say, hi, I'm going to go meet with my assembly member. Do you want to come? So I met with colleagues, you know, that are here and that aren't here today, Madeline Rios, Daniel Tamayo, Mary Hernandez, um, just to name a few. And uh, I started speaking with legislators. Um, I also, right when I joined Coptic, I started sounding the alarm at the ATA and I didn't even realize that I inspired two other Miss colleagues, uh, their names are Sandra and Aaron to yeah. also become involved. So as you guys can see, once we energize each other, it becomes this domino effect. Um, I was you know, given the opportunity to do a PSA with Esther Armida for repeal AB5, you know, calling into appropriations committees. Um, but all of this, once again, all of these things were done because my colleagues told me, hey, are you going to do this? Or hey, would you like to do this, that, and the other? So really it, it was a team effort. And I commend all of you that are here in this meeting or and all of you that are listening or uh, did something. Uh, I really commend you on that for coming together and doing this. Uh, the message that I have to convey about protecting the profession, once again, is that you don't have to do it alone. I always think it's me against the world. It's me against AB5. No, it's not. Engaging with colleagues is going to be your power. Our unity is our power. If you don't know how to talk to your legislators, ask for a company, ask for help, exchange thoughts. Um, I helped one of my colleagues, Jennifer Santiago's, edit one of her op-ed pieces. You know, I'm uh, really happy to do that um, and to contribute to this group effort. Tell someone new, tell someone out of state um, about the efforts uh, that we have done. Out-of-state colleagues are watching. Some of them are watching right now. And some of them have asked me already about this issue. So that's going to be extremely important going forward with the PRO Act. What do I see for the future of our profession? It would be my dream to wake up one day and have another AB5 type law come across and have our legislators call us up and say, hey, Katerina, or hey, Esther, or hey, Giovanna, this law is on the books. Did you know about it? Um, I would love to play offense and not defense in the future, to continue to raise the status of the profession, to increase understanding. And I think that that needs to be done with an attack on, on all fronts, not just constituency driven grassroots, which we've done and we need to continue to do on a national level, but also um, a national coalition to communicate to everyone um, this is what we're doing and this is why. Along with the lobbyists who, you know, pardon, pardon me if this is a little bit punny, but speaks their language. We need someone who understands how to speak with legislators as well as doing that ourselves. We need a well-rounded approach, not just constituent-based advocacy, but also a national coalition. So we need someone who knows how to educate legislators, much like we do with our clients. We talk to them in their language, a language that they speak and speak on their terms. So what can you do now? Write your representatives now. My personal representative is Katie Porter, and I believe that she was very instrumental in the PRO Act. So I'm going to research how to get in touch with her. Educate yourself. If you don't know how to talk to a legislator, there are so many people in this group who do know, how do I build a relationship? So get in touch with someone in this group or just talk to someone you know, and it will have a domino effect. Advocacy is about relationships and that's what we have to continue to build on. We have started it in California. And as the saying goes, as California goes, so does the nation. Now we need that at a national level and we need to continue acting together. Thank you. Thank you.
right on time. My goodness. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So thank you so much for that. It's very inspiring. I really appreciate it. And I know uh, that you've done, not only did you do a PSA, but you've written articles as well. And uh, you forgot, you didn't mention that. So that, that was pretty amazing. And um, it was really nice. You woke up very early. Uh, what time did we show up at the studio? 6.30 in the morning on a Sunday. Uh, that's the time we were asked to be on call. So uh, thank you. You were the trooper that got up uh, on a Sunday to accompany me to the PSA. So thank you so much for that. Um, thank you. Next, thank you. So next we have Maribel Cariño, who is very active. Uh, I don't think Maribel uh, was extremely active at the beginning, but boy, later on, she just took this by storm and she was all over uh, the news and <laughs> interviewed and uh, just advocating for the profession because she realized um, she's very eloquent and therefore um, it helped us a great deal. At least she brought attention to her cause. Maribel, all yours. Thank you. And thank you so much for the compliments. Much appreciated. So early on, I was encouraged by colleagues such as Esther Hermida and Lorena Ortiz Schneider to get involved, which led to me going to the luncheon, the Coptic luncheon in San Diego. I felt so empowered after that luncheon uh, back in November of last year. And that is where I met the Coptic advocate, uh, Hans. And he kept in touch with me and continued to encourage me to participate as, as did other colleagues. And he asked me to write an op-ed. I, while I was working on that in the interim, I joined the Facebook group Freelancers Against AB5 and through another channel, I was asked to do an interview on KUSI News here in San Diego. So I went to that and as a side note, I had such a horrible flu uh, that, that week, but I decided to do it honestly inspired by all of our colleagues who were participating and I, this is this is a screenshot from the interview. And I was with anchor woman, uh, Ginger Jeffries. The emphasis of that interview that I try to transmit was that we are a professional industry of specialized people in a niche, as opposed to how so many people feel like anybody who's bilingual is an interpreter. I meet so many people, they say, what do you do? I'm an interpreter. They're like, so am I <laughs> everywhere because they're bilingual and they work for a company. So then they, uh, so they call themselves an interpreter, which is fine. But I was trying to emphasize that what we do is so specialized. And uh, the, the news anchor, Ginger, after the interview, uh, asked me to keep in touch. She said that, uh, she mentioned that I was easy to interview. And so she would love to keep in touch with me. And, and, and I did keep in touch with her in case of any new development. So coincidentally, a couple of days later, and I speak in a very animated way, so I, it was funny to watch the interview uh, to myself, <laughs> looking at all my facial expressions. But two days later, an op-ed that I was invited to write uh, was published. And the emphasis there was that I have actually, and this is the op-ed, it was published on January 10th, 2020, the emphasis there that I tried to stress was that I had worked for the office of Lorena Gonzalez. I had um, interpreted for her at a couple of events, as well as for Senate President Tony Atkins. So they, they knew who we are and they knew what it was like to work with professional interpreters. They were not asking their bilingual staff to interpret at these important events. And we were in touch with, you know, fee agreements and things like that. And then they uh, she writes up this law forgetting all about us when she really when she really knew uh, who we were. So that was the emphasis of that. Um, and in all of those months going forward in the first part of this year, I did exchange some emails with Lorena Gonzalez's staff. She personally replied to at least one of my emails asking for more information. And uh, I had a couple of like hour long phone calls with, uh, with members from her staff. And then finally in July was the 30th anniversary of the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act. And I, you know, I was told uh, to, I, 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 a colleague reached out to me and said, why don't you reach out to the news anchor at KUSI? She told you to keep in touch to emphasize the importance of sign language interpreters. And so that's what I did. I actually have a little video. I don't know if you can um, show it, Annabella. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you.
This is part of her news report. I thought she did a great job. In the Senate, issues specifically raised by interpreters who work through referral agencies. On June 11th, Assemblymember Lorena Gonzalez acknowledged on the Assembly floor that senators mm -hmm. would fix the omission of interpreters to the bill. But so far, Maribel says she's only gotten words and not action from state leaders. We want commitment. We want to hold our legislators accountable. When are we going to see this change? We don't want it to see it go further. It is very, it's a very simple change. We need this correct combination of words, except professional interpreters and translators, but it is urgent. And we are urging all members of the Senate, including Senate President Tony Atkins, to take action. Now, the need for interpreters is higher than ever due to the pandemic. And therefore, we were emphasizing the rest of the report shows that we were emphasizing that ASL interpreters are essential for the uh, deaf and hard of hearing. So I just want to stress the, um, the idea of team and community, like Katerina already mentioned. I felt so protected by all of you, so grateful, because like Esther said, at first I wasn't so involved. We each have our own situation in life. I'm in a part of my life where I'm a single parent and I'm raising two children and I'm running a small agency <laughs> and it's a lot of work, however small it may be. And it took me a, a second, you know, to get involved, but I'm grateful that I did. Um, in the following months, I continued to see posts from um, uh, AJIC, receiving emails from AJIC, from Coptic, posts from Angie Birchfield and Esther and Madeline Rios and Jennifer Santiago's and Lorraine Ortiz Schneider and Marilee Behar and on and on. And uh, I feel so protected in this community and I just want us all to keep it up and not compete with each other in a negative way, but support each other. Uh, two other people who I always felt their support are Paco, always uh, cheering me on and Ernesto Jimenez who helped me practice for this presentation actually. So I'm grateful for that. And for the future, of course, just like all of you, we know this is a growing industry and it's not going to slow down. We, I, I'm not worried about artificial intelligence replacing us anytime soon. I'm not, I'm not an expert on technology, but I just don't see that. So we will continue to thrive and definitely leadership, like what we're doing right here. I am so inspired by, uh, by the leadership in our community. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, I think I can help with that as the years go on. I can become a leader as well. And we all should. And to continue to educate our clients and other colleagues about what we do so that we continue to thrive. Thank you. Esther, your You're mic is off. You're on mute, Esther. Okay. Thank you, Maribel. <laughs> um, you inspired a lot of people. It does take courage to be in front of the cameras and speak uh, the way you did. Uh, I, I know that most people about, oh, you should have said this, you should have said that, or why didn't you say this? Well, you don't know <laughs> until you have a camera and they're asking you questions and the lights are uh, shining and hitting you and it's really stressful and you want to make sure you get the key points in the limelight, but it's, it's, it's very commendable. And you see, you're a leader in training. All of us are. We didn't know we were going to be doing this. Okay, and that's that's what you're all about. So our next speaker would be Mary Castellanos. She's our cheerleader. <laughs> she's <laughs> she's the one that can go out there and and cheer for us. She's very animated, and I love that. She's very active in social media, but she also takes on responsibilities and help promote it. So tell us about what you did, Mary. Thank you, Esther, and thank you for that introduction. <laughs> so I'm not as prepared as uh, my fellow colleagues. I mean, thank you after Caterina and Maribel, whoa. Um, so I wanted to just kind of be more um, natural into how and why I did it. So Esther one evening said, uh, come on, and we have this event going on, and it's uh, for such and such law for AB5. So I said, okay, sure, I want to go. At the time, I wasn't certified. I was on the way to do so, but I wasn't certified, and I took the court uh, 
uh, course and all that. And I said, I want to go and find out what this is about. When I went there and I found out what it was about, I just knew I had to do something about it. I knew that there was no way um, that I was going into this new profession that I was passionate about. I do community interpreting. So I work with education. I work with, and I interpret for politicians. So I said, there has to be something that I have to do. I started with phone calls. I started with um, sending emails and educating myself in the law. And seeing what I could do to possibly make a difference. And, um, and then little by little, um, more colleagues invited me to join them and visit their assembly members. And I started to reach out to my own assembly member. And I had no idea about the branches of government, to be quite honest with you. We should, right? I mean, I went to school, but I didn't know. And so um, I, I was like, wait, I mean, local, what, this, what's going to make a difference? Okay, well, I learned fairly quickly. I reached out to my assembly uh, member's office. They, I met with them, didn't meet with her, reached out to my senator's office. Um, it was always a, yes, we're doing something about it. We're taking notes. Okay. Went back and spoke to the lobbyist or, you know, um, just shared it on social media. And I see that more colleagues were getting involved and I join in more and more. And then I called again and I you know, restlessly called and finally got the senator on the line, Senator Ross. And in that process, Fabian, Etna, Daniel Tamayo, Caterina, um, Madeline Rios, Ben Carl, so just to name a few, and Esther Mila always cheering me on, and thank you so much for that. I was able to get in and, and explain to them the importance and the difference into what our profession is. And also go down a list of all of the investment that I've done in my education. And at the moment, yes, community interpreting, and I wasn't doing, you know, I was a student and then finally took a test and became um, more educated in, in, in my fields and continue to do so. It never stops. So um, that's how I, I did what I did. I called emails restlessly and always made a video somehow, some way I was more active on Instagram and some LinkedIn um, instead encouraged me to go into Twitter and I did. And there, and then that got really um, hectic very fast. So even um, Miss Gonzalez uh, or the lady that wanted to sabotage us replied to some of the tweets. And I was just, uh, I didn't prepare a, a whole, uh, presentation I'm sorry but uh, there she replied to it and was saying she was sorry I don't know how sorry she was she never made I mean the difference wasn't made um and so the messages that I want to uh, convey to um, freelance interpreters in our profession and protecting our profession is to always just be aware and um, inform others. Some, uh, even some colleagues or interpreters aren't aware of what's going on or the threats that we're faced with. So just inform them and take the time to encourage them to do something. Take the time to just, if they say, yeah, well, that doesn't affect me. I'm not an agency, I'm not this. Yes, it does. It does affect us because it obviously affected us networking and collaborating. And it was a big, um, it, it was a big impact and we all saw it. So how do I say see our future profession growing amazing it's beautiful it's it's a it's a an exquisite amazing profession that we need to just keep um we need to nurture it and we need to be able to just protect it from you know these these people in power that either don't understand it or we need to just keep informing so continue to be active, continue to cheer those that are on top and above us, and then just continue. You can be active just by making a simple phone call. I walked into the Senator's office by myself three times, and then finally I got a group of other colleagues that joined me and it worked out. So um, you can do this. Don't feel that you're alone. You have a complete, you have a cohort. We are all together in this and we, um, we're, we're here together. So thank you so much, Esther, for this. And like I said, I didn't prepare anything, but I hope that this was great. So thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. And that's uh, that's all we wanted. It's, it's not so much, you've already done the work and this is what I'm trying to tell everybody. You have already done the work. This is only for you to recap it or people that don't know you to just share what motivated you to go that one step beyond. Because remember, there are thousands and thousands of interpreters in California and way more elsewhere. But you know what? I can count with my fingers the number of people who are actually very active. So this cannot be. We need to get the ball rolling. And you guys did, okay? The, you guys are the foundation 
of this movement that I consider very important because it is you uh, who worked on, on this. So thank you so much. Now, uh, Paco, did you resolve your issue with your audio? Paco, can, you hear, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Well, we want to see you. I had to log, log out. Let me. Okay, put the video on and, and now. There, there I go. Can you see me? Yes. Five right. minutes of uh, fame right now. I don't need Yay, Paco. Minutes. I don't need five minutes. I don't need fame. But thank you, Esther. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'll take the take some of the minutes. So, um, well, my um, name is Francisco Porras. I Paco is a short name for Francisco. Crespo is uh, my maternal last name, and there's a story behind why I, I use that to um, open up my Facebook account. That's another story. I'm a state certified court interpreter in the Greater, greater Los Angeles area. Um, and I, I'm also not prepared like many of you. But um, it, in regards to the first um, question or what are some of the things that I did or I, ha I have done or continue to do, um, some of the things that I've done, I, I wrote, wrote some emails, I uh, signed petitions, I was in some of the uh, meetings, like the co-optic uh, events, um, at one point, I was a member with AJIC, so somehow I, I supported um, annually uh, some of the events that other organizations have um, had. I participated um, however I could, so hopefully my uh, contribution helped in, even if it was a small contribution, it helped out in some way. Um, in regards to what I, how do I see the future? Um, I guess I'm gonna echo the words of some of the, some of the uh, colleagues here. Um, I, I see the future of interpreting um, as bright. I, I don't see that um, we are, like uh, Maribel said, we're going to be replaced by any type of technology, at least not anytime soon. And how do, um, I'm sorry, that was the second one. Uh, it's okay, Paco. And, Just say whatever. You're a very good speaker. So no, I'm not. I, I I'm better at writing than speaking. But anyways, uh, and the uh, one thing that I want to say, thank you. I want to take, take advantage with my minutes to say one thing. I know that there are some of our colleagues that have paved the way to get to where we are, currently are in our profession, and so I feel that some of us, the newer interpreters, um, have a duty to protect our profession, to defend it, to embrace it. And I'm gonna do my part to do exactly that and communicate it to others. And hopefully uh, we will always have solidarity amongst ourselves. And if we have that, then our profession should be untouchable, if you will. And whatever minutes I have left, I'll just go ahead and offer them to whoever's after me or anyone else out, out there who wants to have my minutes. Thank you so much, Paco. I know that you accompanied a lot, you, Madeline Rios, to visit some legislators. Yeah, and we, went to, we went to see, Mar we went to Marilena Durazo's office. <laughs> it's so yeah. sad that we, she didn't even have the time to see us. Um, and a long time ago, um, I was actually um, a union member for Local 11 when I was a waiter back in the days, many, many eons ago, she was our president. And now that I really needed to have some support from her, she didn't even have the time to meet us in person. She sent a, a representative that with all the respect was like a minion who had like a script and he was wow. trying to say certain things. And, and but yeah, we, that's another thing that I did. I don't wanna take credit for doing a lot of things, okay. but. But thank you so much because I know, I mean, I just want to acknowledge the fact that you did visit some legislators, whether you're successful or not, you were there and that's what counts, okay? Uh, those are brownie points, <laughs> I think. Uh, so we have a next, uh, I, I got to follow up because we are, uh, we want to give everyone a fair share of time. Uh, Roxanne King, I don't know if she's here. I don't see her. And then Geo Lester. And let me give you, besides Jill, and I, I invited her personally because I think when I went onto uh, Twitter, remember I took my 
flight to Twitter and yelled out to the world, any interpreters out there, please help us in California. Gio responded. Not only did she respond, but she got, she engaged uh, with people defending interpreters. She, she was totally uh, very um, adamant because, I mean, she took this fight on a personal level. This, she came to our rescue at a social level. And I really want to acknowledge that and recognize her efforts that it has not gone acknowledged and I've seen unseen. And I know she's a force to be reckoned with. So Gio, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, yes, uh, Esther, you know very well that uh, when it comes to our profession, I am a fighter. I am here sitting down and doing some work for us. <laughs> I am the president of an association in Brazil. I've done work for the ATA. You need me? Tell me, I'm here. I'll put my voice to your service because it is to my service. It is by going, you know, getting up together and uh, fighting the good fight that we get things done. You proved it. All I did was support work. I know that. All I did was support work. I, I don't need the spotlight. I need to direction. You gave me the direction. I took off. That's it. And thank you. Thank you and the group for the success because this is coming. The wave is coming my way. I know that. So helping you get rid of it over there is the best thing for everyone. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. So, thank you so much. So I really wanted to acknowledge that. And um, just to give you, you know, so everybody knows that, um, that Jill Lester was very helpful and I, I just needed to bring that up. <laughs> okay, so next up I have Patty. Do you wanna say anything, Patty Lehman? Uh, sure. <laughs> I'm just going to have to wing it like some others have. You don't need to have five minutes. In fact, you can just say a few words because I know how hard you work. I mean, very few people know you. Yeah. <laughs> you've, been, you've done a lot of work in the background. So I just want to acknowledge that. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, well, um, I'm not a very good speaker or writer. So um, I decided to volunteer to uh, build the website for Coptic. Uh, that's within my skill set, so I just offered that. Um, and I also attended a few meetings with um, uh, my state senator, um, Anthony Portentino, and uh, with um, my assemblywoman, uh, Laura Friedman. Um, and like someone else here said a little while ago, it was quite a learning process for me. I've never been involved at that level. Um, but it was, it, was, it was a good learning. Uh, experience for me. And then also, um, I just want to say that I think that throughout through all of this, I think it's, um, it's very important that we as interpreters remain united. Um, I think that uh, that's one of the big things that I learned through this experience. Um, I've actually been saying it for years. Um, and just, you know, not let those petty little things, you know, divide us because this is, I think that's what helped us in this is that we all came together, you know, no matter what certification language or whatever, and just let go of all of that and, and um, just present ourselves as a united front. And I think that that's really important for the future of our profession that that, that continue uh, that way. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, that's, uh, that was my, um, contribution to the cause. Thank you so much. That's all I needed to, to hear. <laughs> I just wanted your, your face to be highlighted. That's pretty thank much you. it. <laughs> but thank you. It is important. The work that you've done is important. So next up, we have Ryan Le. Now I know how to pronounce the name correctly. He's a Vietnamese interpreter, and he's going to tell you all about um, what he's done. So it's your turn, uh, Ryan. And again, um, you got the floor. Thank you, Esther. And uh, you, you got it right from my last name, Lei, <laughs> for Vietnamese. 
thank you everyone um, for participating in the um, conference call today and uh, I really think it's important that we get together today and we review and we look forward to um, the future of our profession and I want to first of all I want to um, uh, mention about um, the reason why I'm participated and I enjoy the fight um, I re still uh, fairly new to the profession because I only started doing in professional interp interpretation about four years ago and uh, I used to work at a call center and I experienced all the good, the bad, and the ugly of the profession at the call center. And um, I can tell that there's the bilingual individual who trying to be interpreted and um, did a really poor job. I can tell um, there was a really professional course certified interpreter that did a really good job on a legal call um, because I was a op phone operator at the time. And, um, and I do think that <clears throat> it's important that we, we have professional interpreter and translator in the field to um, to assist our uh, clients and um, our patients, um, um, Vietnamese or Spanish native speaker uh, for what, whatever they need in their daily life. And um, AB5 really took, really took that away from us, the freedom to, um, um, to, to work as we want to. And, um, and during this global crisis AB, um, with um, COVID-19, it is so important that we, we are considered essential worker that we um, participate in the fight and if I took away um, that right from us and um, I that's uh, toward the end of last year and then the beginning of this year that I was really trying to participate more I um, gather a group of professional interpreter translator and there was some uh, musician as well to um, come to our assembly a state assembly office in our district and we uh, talk it out those um, the staff and uh, we encourage um, the assembly men to um, give us an exemption that we need uh, for our profession and, but, and also for our profession as well for those musicians and our subscribers. And um, I wrote emails and letters to our lawmakers and uh, encouraged them the same thing to give us the exemption. And I, I, I think that finally we, we gained a little victory with AB2257, but there was still a lot ahead that we, we still need to continue to fight on. And uh, my uh, message that I want to convey to our uh, freelance interpreter trans trainer out there that um, the fight is still there and um, just like Patricia mentioned earlier that uh, this is not time for us to to be divided because we have an, a general election going on red versus blue but uh, in our field in our <clears throat> language field with all the interpreter translator translator this is the time that we need to be united um, to a fight against AB5 and um, proact and I, I, I do know that there's a group on uh, Facebook that actually support AB5. So um, we don't, don't want know about much that. about them. <laughs> okay, uh, so. Yeah, that's okay. It's uh, everybody can do whatever they can. But thank you so much for your, uh, for your participation. Are you, I'm sorry, did you conclude your comments already? I just want no, to. Oh. Sure, no, no, no problem. Uh, I have one more thing to say that about the future of our profession. Um, I think that there's still a rough path ahead and we still need a lot to do uh, with, because AB5 is still there and we, we, we may have proact in the future, become yes. a law. We, we don't know that. So there's still a lot of work to do, um, education, certification and training um, that we, we had to let our voices heard and um, keep spreading the news and a lot of people know that yes. that's, that's what we need to do. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. Much appreciated. Now we're going to have, um, how about if we uh, talk to the people that are present here? We have a video that uh, Jennifer Santiago sent to us and we like to play it, but we have a couple of people who are still in the audience or participants who would like to speak. I think we need, um, Let's see, by order, let me see. Edna is not here. If she is, she said she was gonna join late. Um, Daniel Tamayo, are you going to say anything, Daniel? One, two, okay. Nope. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, it's great to see many of you uh, friendly faces and colleagues here. Um, quickly, uh, why did I do anything? Uh, and I feel like Gio, 
more like uh, I supported a lot of effort um, from left, right, up, down, you name it. I was uh, supporting both financially as well as with time sharing information, uh, more so bottom line, just like Geo, because I care about our profession. And because I saw the impact of um, AB5 initially uh, on our colleagues, um, and of course, our future, the future of students, uh, future colleagues. So um, how can I tell anyone that this is worth uh, their time if um, we don't have that secured? Um, let's see, what did I do? Um, again, uh, support, but contacted four different uh, legislators. Um, I talked to just about everyone and I'm very thankful with Mary, with Madeline, um, for including me, inviting me. Every time they, they went to talk to someone, you know, there it went so long as it was physically possible. And we talked about it, we strategized um, often. And um, I was at something else. I was at a meeting at a, a LA City Council and I just ran into this Congresswoman. I talked to her and, and now, and this is uh, kind of links into what can we do now um, with all these politicians right now that they want to, want to get into office and they're calling everyone. So I've been telling everyone that calls me, um, Democrat or Republican, that um, I asked them what their record was in you know, voting or how they feel about AB5. And like, I won't like blanket uh, vote for Democrats, even though I tend to vote uh, for Democrats um, simply because of that. So I, and actually I had one uh, person running for Congress who called me back and we were talking for about 30 minutes um, on the line. It was really cool. And the guy was like, you know, again, politicians, maybe lying, don't know. But fact is, I did my part. I explained as best as I could. Oh, it was unexpected. I didn't think this person was going to call me back. Um, so something, you know, things like that. Again, the invitations, um, current candidates. Um, I guess uh, one, something that I would like to see is to leave politics aside as best as possible. Those who know me, uh, go to my personal page. You will see what my take on politics is but it's a very personal thing. And in this AB5 or anything that relates to our profession is a nonpartisan issue. So we need to reach across the aisle and like, you know, uh, what the what they may be doing up there, but it's not, you know, we need to be together. So um, that's, that's it. And again, thanks everyone for everything you have done for our profession. Thank you for showing up, Daniel. First of all, people look up to you, they follow your lead. And again, uh, just because you write something on your group where you have what, 15,000 members? <laughs> I don't know how many members you have, you lost count, but whatever you say has a, an impact that it, it's not just the United States, it has an impact in the rest of the world because you're a leader, people follow you, whether, whether you want to or not. I mean, just the fact that you have a group, you administer the group and it's a nice one, um, people listen to you. So the fact that you mentioned something like that probably encouraged many other people to take action. And that's the important part. So thank you for that. And thank you for coming here. Thank you for the invitation. Thing, next up, uh, and I think I meant to call her first, Angelica. Uh, it's up because she is fairly young interpreter. Angelica, where are you? I'm here. All right. So you're up and... Um, I, I'm just excited. I hope that she talks to you about everything that she's accomplished all by her little self. Uh, <laughs> something I admire a great deal. So it's all yours, Angelica. Thank you. Um, so, uh, the, well, the the I think the first question is why. And so I didn't do a, a long introduction on myself just because my background is not nearly as as long or as um, accomplished as the majority of you. I have been a translator for a few years now, many, maybe five years, and I became an interpreter a couple of years ago only to enhance my, um, my resume, my, just, to, just to feel like I had a more complete background. But um, I'll give a little shout out to a couple of people. One of them, I think he's here, is Ernesto. I think I would not have become a, a, a professional interpreter had it not been from, for him and Monica Martinez Alvarado, who dragged me to like, meetings. I had a meeting where Esther was um, just teaching us about the profession. And little by little, I started understanding it better and, and loving it more. But I come from a background of the service industry. And it was um, 
letting go of having a regular job for me was a process that took me years. And it finally took place on the worst possible year, which was 2020. I said, <laughs> on 2020, I'm going to quit my job at the restaurant and just be a full-time translator and interpreter. And it could not have been worse timing because we had COVID, we had AB5, and in a way, it was my desperation that actually had me forced to do whatever I could um, to um, preserve my so young profession. Um, and so I attended a Coptic meeting, which was, um, I think that was not the first thing. The first thing was Esther just um, ringing every alarm that she could find and, and trying to get us all to wake up. Uh, and realize how, how bad things would be if we did not act. So then I attended a Coptic meeting that was uh, heavily promoted by her. And it was such a nice experience because coming from a background of translation, you are very used to working on your own. And then you see this room full of people who are uh, you know, working core rooms, work together, know each other. And I, I only knew a couple of people there, so it felt good to be sort of part of a community, you know, even if it was somehow forming itself, but hearing everybody's perspective and it was very encouraging. And so a few days later, I think Esther motivated me to write a little piece for Coptic, which didn't, probably didn't end up being uh, published, but still it got me, it, it made me investigate further. It got me more involved. And then I, I decided to focus on the commitment that I made during that Coptic meeting, which was to reach out to my legislator. And so at the time, um, I live in Palm Springs. So that's uh, another advantage that I had. Um, so it's a, it's a smaller community than a lot of the cities where you guys live. And that helps. Sometimes it's, it's a bit easier, not to say that it's super easy, but um, it's a little easier to, to get in touch with your direct um, legislator. So we were, we did not have a senator because he had just uh, um, resigned for another position, but we did have an assembly member and I, I went to his office, reached out to him. They said, he cannot see you for the next two months. And I said, I'm sorry, that's not good enough. I don't have an income. So I kept knocking, I kept calling. And then sure enough, they called me back and they said, he can meet you on Friday. And so I reached out to the numerous groups and there were so many people that were helpful and, and shared materials with me and, and shared ideas. Like I remember somebody mentioned, bring extra copies, whatever you're showing or reading, have copies to pass out. And so I came in with this, you know, like really careful presentation, explaining my background, explaining, I believe it was Mary who talked about the investment, not just in money, but in time that we have dedicated to this profession. And I, I really made it a, a very important point to uh, mention how difficult it is to become certified, how, how many times some people um, attempt to, to become certified just to give them an idea of like, hey, we're not just any profession. It took us a lot of hard work to be here. And so my assembly uh, member, Chad Mays, was extremely receptive. Not only that, but he put me in touch with all of his stuff. And he's like, hey, if they, I'm going to give you my, you know, he called it his personal number. I think it's just like his direct line. And, and he's like, if they don't reach out to you, call me. And so this was in mid-January. At the end of January, I get an email from them and they said, can you go to Sacramento tomorrow and meet with Lorena Gonzalez? And so, again, I'm a, I'm a fairly new interpreter and I'm thinking, I reached out to Esther and I reached out to the group. So I'm like, can somebody come with me? Because, yeah, I can talk, as you can see, I, I, I can talk, but I don't know enough about the profession and I may not be the best person to be there representing my uh, profession uh, in front of this, this woman who thinks she knows what she's talking about. So I had a, Amy Benavides um, kindly reach back to me and she said, I can go with you. I need a little bit more of a notice, but next time reach out to me and I'll, and I'll come with you. And, you know, she's, she's a pretty good person to accompany you because, you know, definitely she's, um, she knows a lot about a profession, a lot more uh, than I know for sure. Um, so I declined because I, I felt like it was just too rushed. I was, I'm in Palm Springs. I would have to fly to Sacramento, which I was ready to do, but not on such short notice and not alone. So it took a few months and then um, um, COVID happened. Eventually. And eventually, <laughs> eventually I get a phone call and they're like, well, we're going to do not, not a live meeting, but we're going to do a, a virtual meeting with Lorena Gonzalez, with Chad Mace and 
And I suggested again, can I bring another interpreter with me? And Chad may uh, talk me out of it. He said, you can do it. I've heard you talk. I know you can, I know you can present your case very well. And I think it's better. It's going to be stronger if it's just you. And, and, and his advice was talk, talk from your own experience. Don't say we don't say, I'll just say what it's like for you. I think that's going to resonate more. And so, you know, he's the one getting me the meeting and I was, I, I listened to him. I, it was an interesting experience, I have to say, because you see this persona that's very aggressive, that's very opinionated, um, and um, and then you you meet with her and you see, I mean, she was she let me finish every single thing that I had to say, and then she started talking, and then, you know, she had a lot of obviously um, she was saying some things that were false, some that were incorrect, but I I. I made my case and I, I explained to her uh, one of the one of the points that I really when she was saying, well, I, I respectfully disagree. I said, well, you disagree. But in this case, our opinion, we are the profession. Our opinion should matter more than that of legislators, because we're the ones who are working in this profession. And, she, you know, I could tell, though, that there were a few things that she was just not aware or maybe never resonated with her. And she was she was being way more receptive than what I expected. I, I, th I thought she was going to be a bit more confrontational. Um, and it was a very brief meeting, probably about 20 minutes long. Um, I think I think it's just maybe not as uh, imp impactful as some of the other people who met with her and finally made um, our exemption possible. But I think it did make a dent because I could hear her say, hey, like I could hear, I could hear her going, like, hmm, like I, I, that's something I didn't know or, or, or that's a good point. So um, I, I was very grateful to um, my assembly member. And uh, as far as my message, my, my only message is, um, yeah, don't, don't feel over, overwhelmed. Uh, the way I look at politicians is they are not our leaders. They are our representatives and they work for us. And they're supposed to represent us and do what's best for us. So I try not to have that idea that like they have this aura that we have to look up to them. No, they 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 work for us and they're supposed to listen to us. And it is their job. It is the job of my assembly member to listen to me and to um, count my voice and to meet with me. And, and if I have to call 10 times in order to get that meeting, I will. Um, and I think that we got to focus more on building a community. On, on seeing what our things in common are and our common goals are. I love this profession. I, I have been doing it for a very, very short time, not even a full year, I would say, but I love it. Um, I, I think that we have to fight for it. And I think we have a very bright future. I think that what we did in California is definitely gonna matter a lot when they look at uh, the law nationally because they're going to look at the law in California as an example so if they do try to do uh, the pro act I think they are going to be considering why the interpreters get that and understanding more and I think a big part of our job and one of the things that I'm most proud of doing and and can you know continue learning from all of you is um, teaching people and um, creating an education on like how um, important our profession is Somebody said we're essential workers. Absolutely. So that's that's my message and that's my outlook for the future. Continue teaching people. And I think the best way that we can teach people how important a profession is is by doing an excellent job, by keeping, um, you know, staying prepared, by by you know being amazing when we do our profession, by by educating ourselves. And then people are going to take notice and say, hey, that's what you do is really remarkable beyond beyond just like you're a bilingual person, like like sometimes they tend to assume. So I, I think that pretty much covers what I wanted to say um, about my experience. I could go into more details about the Lorena Gonzalez, but I don't want to take up too much time. I've already, well, I think I've spoken already long enough. You're the time, I think, but thank you so much for that presentation. I know uh, we really need to stick to the time, guys, because, uh, I'm, I'm excited. I wanted you to share that important part, I think, because it's very courageous of you to take this on a solo. Uh, there were reasons why Coptic didn't uh, accompany you that I know, but it doesn't matter. And 
um, it's not worth saying here and it's not necessary. You did it and that's the most important thing is the actions that you take that counts, not what somebody else tells you to do or not to do. So thank you for that. Uh, next up, um, and I really wanted you to say it. <laughs> so next up, we have Anabela Tidona who has been our IT uh, person today. Um, it's her turn, Anabela. Oh my God, okay. So let's see, I've been spotlighting people. I've been promoting people. So my name is Anabela. I know most of you, uh, I'm a Spanish interpreter, um, court certified federal state. I'm also a medical interpreter, CHI. I did my master's in medical interpreting. So we do a lot of uh, medical conferences with Esther in Orange County. Uh, not anymore, they, they kind of dried out. But um, so I want to thank Esther for uh, creating this space for everyone to, uh, to get to know each other, to see your faces. I've heard so many of like your names and I've never met, for example, Angelica. I had never met uh, Patty. Uh, I just see their names uh, on Facebook and it's so nice to see them in the flesh. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and I want to thank Esther also for uh, creating a space where everybody's invited. And I think that's the big takeaway. If there's anything I, I want to say is that uh, she was, I, I want to speak to your greatness of putting personal differences aside. And, you know, I think everybody took their own path to making a difference and making a dent. Um, like Angelica said, and, uh, and you never judge, you never discourage on the opposite. You're like, you do whatever you think it's good to make a difference. And you, you supported a lot of groups, you supported a lot of people. Um, but I also want to speak to that, that you really invited when you did the, the other webinar, you invited everyone and everybody was invited. And if I had been making an event, I wouldn't have invited everybody because I, you know, if you agree with me, great. If you don't, then you're not invited. So um, personally, I live in Santa Monica. So my assembly member is uh, Richard Bloom. He's a Democrat. Uh, he, um, I never met him. I did meet with his um, field representative. Uh, I talked to him pretty much every week on the phone. Uh, he was very receptive, but the bottom line was he couldn't do anything because it's Lorena's bill. Um, and then I, I did go to uh, his office and from the citizen point of view, it felt like really great to finally, you know, after living for 13 years in Santa Monica to for the first time, go to my representative's office. Like it, it felt like a good civic thing to do to, you know, be like, hey, I pay your salary and you gotta listen to my problems and you better solve them. Uh, I don't know if I if it made any difference, but it certainly felt good to vent and be like, you're gonna hear it from me, and I'm just gonna drop it into your office because you're not picking up the phone right now. I'm just you're a mile away from my house, so I'm just going to barge into your office, and I did, um, and it felt great. Um, and then my senator is uh, Ben Allen. Uh, we were uh, David Higby was able to get uh, a meeting with uh, the musicians. So they did a big meeting for all freelancers and they had like three different shifts. And uh, it was first the musicians, then the writers, and then like a miscellaneous group. And they forgot to tell the miscellaneous, which was just me to let us in. So I get let in this meeting at the tail end of it. And that was a little frustrating, but again, I was able to like, at least like do a little jab and, you know, vent some. Um, and again, we kept in touch with their office and, you know, uh, I went to one of the Coptic meetings. Uh, it was great to, you know, meet, um, Jennifer. We're going to hear her, um, her testimonial in a little bit. She recorded something. Uh, but yeah, the big takeaway is just to, I think the most important thing is that from now on, we need to have a presence in Sacramento. Uh, nobody. I mean, 
what we did is great. It's really good. It's a start. But I think that the takeaway is that we need a presence in Sacramento. That's why the doctors and the attorneys were not even worrying about this because the moment people were talking about AB5, they were they they have a presence, a long-standing presence in Sacramento, and they were already just, you know, they they're not a part of it. They're like this very established professions, and we need to aim to be that one day, to have a, to be established profession, to be recognized as a profession, not as a gig. Uh, and that was like my little like punchline in the article that I that I was interviewed for on La Opinión. No somos una changa. La interpretación no es una changuita, es una profesión. And I think uh, if we could have a presence in Sacramento, and I think the, the thing that we need to uh, preach to other colleagues is to really put in money, put money where our mouth is. And lobbyists are expensive and we need to devote a uh, part of our earnings to having a uh, lobbyist in Sacramento. And that's me. That was pretty amazing. Short and sweet. Thank you so much. And I did want you to mention that article that you wrote in La Opinion, which was very, very nice. Um, you were interviewed and I'm glad that it made it. Made it. So next up, why don't we play? I think we're leaving Tony Valle to the end. You know why? Because his last name, st it starts with a V. I mean, un poquito más and he would have been a Z. I'll be, I'll be the closer. <laughs> you are. So, but we'll let, we'll just play, um, uh, Jennifer Santiago's wrote, I mean, created a little video for us. Hers is over five minutes. And I don't know how much time because I still want to discuss. There's a question. I still want to discuss a little bit of uh, questions um, at the end. And I want to really wrap up by eight o'clock. So we have only, you know, 19 minutes to finish. So can you play Jennifer's now, please, Anabela? My Absolutely. Girl. Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, well that worked before. Why don't we go to someone else while I refresh that video? So sorry. That's quite all right. Uh, Tony Valle, uh, you have your presentation and please, I know that you timed it. Five minutes. You could I walk. could I graciously request 45 minutes or 45 seconds, sorry, from Paco's time? I just need 45 seconds to close. Okay, if not, that's all right. Go ahead. Thank you, <laughs> Esther. Thank you, thank you. All right. <laughs> there were five specific efforts I made to campaign against AB5, and I will briefly mention mention each one. First of all, from the moment I heard about AB5 sometime in December of 2019, I considered it a serious threat to personal and professional freedom, and I sounded the alarm on my Facebook forum that is called the Resource Center for Certified Interpreters. Through the forum, I I was able to communicate with almost 2,000 colleagues about every AB5 activity that our colleagues were engaged in. For at least the first quarter of the year, my forum was entirely taken over with postings devoted to AB5. Many colleagues connected through the forum and agreed to meet with the representatives together rather than go alone. I believe that the forum made a significant and positive impact overall among our community of colleagues in battling AB5. On my Resource Center forum, we protect our colleagues by keeping them connected in a safe and supportive environment. And our primary focus remains on encouraging them to achieve certification goals. On the forum, we refuse to be silenced. Second, in speaking with our colleagues, I heard them say that they had no experience whatsoever in terms of meeting with elected representatives. So I set up some strategy session meetings with those who had scheduled appointments to meet with the representatives, and we discussed ways of organizing their presentation to be most effective during those meetings. I also provided them with written materials that would provide step-by-step -step guidance about what to do during a call with 
your elected representative. The feedback that I received from colleagues that I spoke with was that the bullet points that I prepared were helpful and ensured a productive meeting. I believe that one way to protect our profession is by identifying a need in our own community and then providing a solution for that need. Third, on Friday, January the 10th, I met with Steve Veris, who is the legislative director for my state senator, Maria Elena Durazo, who's one of the co-authors of AB5. My goal was to establish trust and gain rapport with every person in her office so that I would gain their support by being credible and compelling. I told them that I was not able to do the volunteer work in the community that I'd like to do because AB5 was adversely affecting our profession as freelancers. I believe that we protect our profession by getting to know all of our elected representatives and then advocating for our own professional interests. Fourth, on Friday, January the 24th, I spoke at the first repeal AB5 rally in Los Angeles. My argument then and now has been the same. AB5 is a monstrous law that devours our freedom. AB5 abolishes choice and it restrains us from seeking to build and create our own enterprise. By delivering my speech and then hearing from so many others who had been devastated by the law, it strengthened my resolve to keep fighting against it. This experience confirms that we need to be vigilant to protect our profession from the external threats posed by bad legislation. Lastly, in March of this year, I knew that a significant number of our colleagues were feeling anxious, scared, and powerless about how we would provide for our families. For those of us here in California, we had a double whammy effect that AB5 would prevent us from being able to work from home as we feared that agencies would not hire us. So I reached out to about a dozen colleagues and I created a group I called Team Resilience. And we agreed to meet for six sessions, brainstorming ideas about cultivating resilience within ourselves and regaining a sense of power in our lives by focusing on what we could control. That Inca Mangino led our first meeting. Gio Lester led all of our subsequent meetings. I have continued meeting with eight of the 12 Team Resilience members on a weekly basis via Zoom, and we are all focused on achieving our goal as the federal exam vanquishers team. I believe that this experience confirms that by connecting with colleagues, we have tapped into a special source of power that has fueled us to achieve something extraordinary together. Ultimately, I believe that we protect our profession by building up and encouraging our colleagues. For those colleagues who wish to join us in protecting our profession, we welcome your participation, but you do need to understand the fundamental challenges that we face. When we spoke to union funded politicians who created and voted for AB5, we realized that they are not responsive to the voice of the people because, because it is the unions who have bought and paid for their seat and their power. Even after union leaders who occupy those seats of power saw all the damage that AB5 was causing, our howls of protest fell on deaf ears and hearts of stone. They said we were angry because they, quote, took away our lollipops. In closing, what should our marching orders be going forward? We will have to begin the effort of building a national organization to lobby for our own exemption if we are dealing with the new administration in January of next year. There's no question that the PRO Act is ready to be put on the table and signed into law via an executive order, regardless of who controls the House and the Senate. If we are not seated at the table before the PRO Act is signed into law, we will find ourselves on the table with our freedom to freelance being carved up into tiny little pieces. And I found this quote from Andrew Carnegie that should inspire all of us to continue doing this work, quote, Teamwork is the ability to work together toward a common vision, the ability to direct individual accomplishments towards organizational objectives. It is the fuel that allows common people to attain uncommon results, end of quote. I commend every team member here who attained uncommon results on behalf of our freedom to freelance. Thank you. Bravo, Tony. Very nice. Thank you so Thank much you. for that. Uh, did I did I did I exceed my time limit or was I it good? Doesn't matter. It was very in inspiring. So good. thank you, thank you so much. Well, thank you uh, for that. All right. So we next up we have Giovanna Farias. Are you here, Giovanna? I'm here. Yes. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Nice to see you all. Um, I'll just be very brief. Um, I did pretty much the same thing that everyone else has already mentioned. Uh, I went to the Coptic meeting. I joined several Facebook groups that were aimed at this effort. I also emailed and called senators and assembly members offices and supported financially uh, AGIC, Coptic. Um, and I was also invited by Jennifer Santiago to join her <clears throat> 
at a meeting that she was able to get with Senator Umberg's legislative director. And during that meeting, my focus as a court certified interpreter, um, along the lines of what Angelica said, just to kind of echo your personal story, I stress the fact that lawyers were exempt for the, from the bill and as court certified interpreters, we should be as well because we're officers of the court that are licensed by the state of California to provide professional services in the legal field. And also making sure people are aware that the passage rate of this uh, exam, as we all know, is far lower than the bar exam. So Again, not to minimize any other type of interpreting, whether it's conference, medical or whatnot, I was just focusing on myself and coming from the private sector and having left a very stable career there to become an independent uh, court certified interpreter and the expense that that uh, caused and, and the equipment that I've purchased and whatnot, like many of us, that was my focus. So it was really great to be invited by Jennifer. But I also just want to briefly say that for better or worse, I'm very good at flying under the radar. So I'm not the most vocal or active on social media. You probably just see me liking a lot of posts. Um, and I think it's okay to, to be that way if that's inherently who you are. But I've become more engaged and this is just the beginning. So I've actually really tried to focus on engaging with court reporters and attorneys and anyone else that I come in contact with while I'm on the job, just letting them know what's going on because I feel like there's a lot of complacency around this. And if we don't keep talking about it and we just kind of let it fade to the background, um, it's going to Hopefully not, but it may just kind of end up going away and all this effort that we've put into it. So just encouraging people to do what they can. All efforts are compounding efforts. And I, I just look forward to collaborating more with colleagues and there's a long way to go. So thank you everyone for everything you've done. Thank you, Giovanna. I know you're very, very shy. <laughs> so I really- Yes, so the fact that I decided to become an interpreter is beyond me, so. <laughs> but you're very personable and it's just amazing. <laughs> and you're just, you're just- Thank you. That's thank you. I have my moments. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. So, thank you. So uh, the Jennifer's video work or no? Uh, yes. yes, 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 yes. I okay, we're gonna that video and then we're gonna go. There's a very good question that was asked by Robert Sette, and I hope that he can ask the question himself. Okay. And then we can uh, talk amongst ourselves about that. Okay. This opportunity to share and for organizing this event. I'm grateful to be able to work together with my fellow colleagues. Hi, my name is Jennifer Santiago, and I live in Garden Grove, California. I've been a freelance healthcare interpreter for 11 years certified since 2012 through CCHI. And over the years, I've branched out into other arenas of interpreting like immigration, community, educational, and some legal interpreting. And it's a uh, joy again to be here today. And I pray that my story will help to inspire others to join the effort to protect our profession. It was early 2019 when I first read an article about Dynamex. As I connected the dots about what the ruling could potentially mean for freelance interpreters and translators, I became concerned. By the summer of 2019, as AB5 went through the legislative process, the situation became even more disconcerting. I remember in June, July, August, leaders in our industry started um, calling our attention to uh, the need to contact our lawmakers. And I started sending emails and trying to rally the troops. Unfortunately, the law passed in September 2019 without an exemption for our profession, and it was then that I knew I had to do something. On September 30th, 2019, I attended Coptic's first informational dinner in Los Angeles. I was encouraged and inspired by the turnout and by what I heard. This was an opportunity for our profession to rally together, and in our collective strength, we'd be able to reach our lawmakers. Self-employment was greatly valued and modeled for me by both of my parents. My late dad was a freelance piano player, and my mom is a swim instructor, having operated her own business since I was in preschool. As a freelance certified healthcare interpreter, I love what I do, and it's a joy 
for me to be able to serve others with my language gift. And I'm thankful to be able to carry out my work on my terms in a way that benefits my family and that allows me to provide preventive self-care to manage my bipolar disorder, which was diagnosed in college. So with the looming threat to my freelance career, I willingly sprang into action. In the fall of 2019, I joined Freelancers Against AB5 on Facebook to help become more informed. I also read AB5 for myself, and I did the best that I could to get the word out. A few days after Christmas in 2019, a court-certified colleague and I met with our state senator, Tom Umberg's legislative analyst. The meeting went well, and uh, Senator Umberg took our concerns to Senator Hill, who actually authored SB 900, which was our first help, hope for an exemption, and then ended up getting tabled. In January 2020, I led a group of eight interpreters and translators in a meeting with my assemblyman, Tyler Deep. This included Spanish, Arabic, and Vietnamese colleagues. And then that same month, I actually joined Twitter for the sole purpose of contacting my lawmakers regarding AB5. When COVID hit, things came to a halt for a couple of months, but eventually a myriad of opportunities unfolded. I organized a diverse group of interpreters to follow up via Zoom with Senator Umberg's office. I was also able to support a couple of colleagues by participating in conference calls and Zoom meetings with their lawmakers, um, including Senator Lena, Lena Gonzalez out of Long Beach. And then I was compelled to write an op-ed sharing my story, which was published in Cal Matters as we neared the home stretch with AB 2257 in the Senate. Through AB 2257 with the amendments, certified healthcare interpreters like myself have a viable pathway to continue to provide reliable language access as independent contractors. We can be encouraged that our voice was heard Interpreters, unfortunately, were not recognized under professional services as were translators, but the new law does specify that we may contract with referral agencies if we hold certification when available based on the language or the area of service. The recognition of certification is an important step for medical interpreters, especially in workers' comp, to help ensure that injured workers have appropriate access to an accredited interpreter, even in follow-up treatment appointments. Rather than being a burden, my involvement as a grassroots advocate has been a rewarding process. I've become more confident and more outspoken. I've tried to keep a positive attitude and encourage others to hold on to hope even when things didn't seem to be going so well. I'm more motivated now to grow professionally and personally, and I'm ready to continue to raise my voice for interpreters and translators and the people we serve to contribute to the betterment of our profession and to defend our freedom to freelance. I know that the fight is not over with uh, the PRO Act on the horizon. We need to remain vigilant. We need to be ready to do our part. So thank you so much. God bless you. And may we continue to work together. Sorry, I need to unmute myself. I think I'm unmuted. All right. Um, that was really nice. Um, I'm sorry that you couldn't be here. But I do have um, a question from somebody in the audience. And we're, um, oh, there she is. But she, um, we already had her information. <laughs> uh, Robert Sette uh, has a really good question. And I want him to ask the question. I think I'm going to answer but uh, we don't have very much time. We can take a few more minutes extra, but I don't want to take your time. Robert, you're Thank on. You. Thank you, Esther. Can you hear me? A voice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> a voice for radio and a face to match, as my friends say. <laughs> um, I, I want to ask, uh, and, and just a, a brief background. Um, I've been involved with the ATA for a number of years, for 30 years as a translator. And I'm running for the board this year, and I'm very concerned that we don't have at the level of ATA and possibly at NAGIT, I don't know, I'm not nearly as involved with NAGIT. I'm, I'm concerned that we don't have a real strategy to hit the ground running on November 4th uh, after the election to, to combat the PRO Act. 
um, I'm of the opinion that we won't have a second bite at the apple the way Californians have had with AB5. And, and that was a huge struggle. You know, it would have been great to be, as someone said, I forget exactly who said it, it would have been great to be one of the uh, professions like attorneys or physicians who were in from the start, who were calm because they had an exemption. I want to see translators and interpreters be that with the PRO Act. And, and I want to know your advice on what we can uh, prompt and, and petition and badger, if necessary, our national associations to do in order to, to get in and, and have that exemption guaranteed from the start. And thank you. Thank you for that question. As you know, um, I started a petition uh, that has 250 signatures asking our national associations to consider lobbying. Uh, Najid is actually thinking about that very seriously and they have invited me to speak uh, to their board. Uh, there's other things that we're doing here in California. Um, I understand a lot of people mention Coptic as the one uh, organization that actually moved uh, the home base the, you know, that motivated the local interpreters to be active, to do constituency advocacy. And that was uh, successful up to a point. Um, it brought attention to everyone. Uh, but the actual work was done by other groups, okay? And uh, you can tell, but if you watch the other video, you'll be able to see that. After I saw that video, I mean, after I heard everybody speaking, because what I've heard was the same thing you heard. It was the first time for me, knowing a lot of the things that happen behind. Uh, it, after that, we realized, hey, wait, we gotta do something. Our national associations are not doing anything. And if not, they're not doing enough. And if they are hiding behind another group to do their bidding for them, that's not acceptable. So they either have to change their vote laws, the bylaws, the way they're constituted, or we just take it into our own hands. So uh, I can't really reveal much of what has been saying. We're in the um, just conversation. We're having a conversation about moving forward, but it's a very serious conversation. And just so you know, this is, you guys are the base. I mean, I, I'm counting on all of you to support this uh, because this is not about one group. It's not about two. It's about the entire, the entirety of the profession. What we do know is that what happened in California thanks to what happened in California, there is a very slim chance that uh, we may not be bundled into the PRO Act. This is what people in Sacramento are saying, and this is uh, not, I don't know that directly. It just heard that somebody was told, you know, that this is going to benefit us in California. So, but, but that doesn't mean that we're going to stop here. We need to lobby. And I've learned that lobbying is what matters. Lobbying is, somebody mentioned it here. You need to go into Sacramento and know how do you talk. And it's not about, hey, I'm here because I represent this group of interpreters and I need you to defend me and give me an exemption. No, we have to build relationships. We need to help whenever they're there and support them. I, I've been learning a lot too. This is a life lesson for me, okay? I've been in this for a very long time. I fought unions before uh, and lost. So proud to say that, but I stood up to a giant, okay? And it's not my first rodeo. So I want everyone to know that we are thinking about it. There is going, there is a movement and I hope, and, and I hope that this goes national. It's not just about California. I hope that there's not, and this is not going to be for agencies or, no, this is for interpreters and translators. We need to professionalize ourselves. We call ourselves professionals. We make a professional income. So what's the next step? It's professionalizing by having an entity that represents us, you know, like, the Bar Association, the Medical Association, architects, everybody has their own huge association. And what do we have? Educational associations that represents us. 
And they, yeah, they have somebody watching out for something in, in DC. Well, how come they didn't warn the membership that there was a, something going on in California? They knew about it. Every, there's very few people knew about it. How come the rest of us didn't know about it? So that's what is missing here. We need to have and we need to create awareness. And every one of us are self-employed. We're an entity, guys, right? Isn't that what we want in AB5? We have the right, not just to freelance, but we need, we need to prove to everybody that we have our own business, that we're self-employed and that we are an entity. We are in business to provide businesses to other uh, services, to other companies or agencies, whomever it is. But that is what is required. We're not here looking for somebody to protect us. This is our turn to fight back. And we proved it regardless of what group you, you were cheering for. I mean, there were groups that I didn't even know were actually working on this. There is this huge uh, agency that actually put money into California. I didn't know about it. Well, I did hear about it uh, for a moment because I got called by them, but it's, it doesn't matter. It's for us. And this is what I wanted to hear for. I, I wanted to thank you. I hope I answered that question, Robert, because I get really uh, emotional. I get really excited um, about what we're doing from this point forward. And um, I think everybody else uh, feels the same way. I've heard the comments from everybody. We need a little to step up the game and it's good what we did. What we did is good. Now we just need a name to say here, I come on behalf of this association or, or just creating a, an entity that is exclusively to defend us. And there's a name for, um, I forgot what the name is, uh, not just a lobbying group, but um, political, whatever it i forgot what it is but regardless this is it so any other questions any other comments related to what we've talked about here um fabian <laughs> fabian is ready to put on his gloves tram i know tram is from arizona what do you what what do you have to say i know you're fighting your fight over there <laughs> Yeah, so you have your AB5, we have our HB2689 and HB2337, and you have your freelancers against AB5, so we have Arizona Independent Contractors against HB2689 and HB2337. So I am hoping um, that everyone here attending on the Zoom um, webinar will also support us because like everyone here, we are all in it together um, just as much as even though I don't live in California but I was 110% supporting you guys as much as I could being here and with everything I have on social media and telling people about it and Ryan and Quinn she went for me here she, they did represent the Vietnamese interpretation um, interpreters so I'm hoping you can and um, get on board with our fight as well. And hopefully we are in the exact same boat as you guys. <laughs> I thank you so, so Thank you so much, Esther, for having this conversation and uh, just everything you've done. And I am very, very um, inspired by everyone here and also very hopeful that, like you said, we have a lobbyist political, whatever the word you, you're missing, that is uh, going to advocate for us and work for us, um, for translators, interpreters, and, um, you know, actually have something that is going to be effective and not just an association, we won't name them, but starts with an A and ends with an A, that um, I feel like really doesn't do anything. So... <laughs> And I'm not going to keep on paying membership and supporting something that doesn't represent me. So. I, I think they, um, if they realize that, I mean, they serve a purpose and I am a member of the two national associations. I'm very proud of it. I serve as much as I can. I think they can continue doing it. But if you don't take uh, this into your own hands, we will. And, um, you know, I wanted to send all those signatures. Uh, guess what? I, I couldn't go in the GoFundMe 
and somehow I can't access that one. But anyway, thank you everyone for being here. I just wanted to leave you with this uh, message that you find here. Um, it's about, you know, we are creating history, but it's what pushes us forward, right? And um, that's what it's all about. I just wanted to um, share that last message with you. Let me stop sharing the screen uh, to say goodbye to everyone. I'm using two screens here. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate your... Bye. Later on, colleagues. Thank Bye. You. Good night. Have, Have a good, good night, night everyone. everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Ciao, Bye, everyone. Bye. Ciao. Good night. Ciao, ciao. Everyone. Bye. After hours, everyone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so past dude. Happy so past.